guys, today we're going to take a look at how to put stripes on our drawings. Um, I have done the outlines for two looks already, so we can take a look at how stripes will change depending on the garment and what the garment is doing. So to understand stripes a little bit better, um, we have to take a look at sort of the different types of stripes that we can have. Um, now I have a little swatch here that we can show. So this is um, a pinstripe, so only like one little thread is in there, but it's indicative of most stripes for woven. Um, and by that, I mean it is what's called yarn dyed. So if you look really closely at the top here, these little stripes are not printed or anything else. It's actually a yarn that has been dyed this color and then woven in. And that's what we call yarn dyed stripes, where the yarns are actually dyed a specific color. And then when they're woven, the different colored yarns are arranged on the loom to create the stripes. Um, now there are printed stripes, but for the most part, they behave a lot like our yarn dyed stripes. So our yarn dyed stripes will follow the grain line very closely, okay? So they'll either follow the length grain or the cross grain. Or in the example of plaids, they'll do both. They'll follow both the length grain and the cross grain, okay? And that's really important to know because whatever the fabric is doing and how it's bending and folding is how the stripes are going to fall, okay? So we have a little bit of a simple, I wanna start with the simpler example over here and let's figure out how those stripes are going to fall along the fabric, okay? Now let's start at the top with the shirt. Now let's do first the length grain. So let's say we have length grain stripes. So I wanna know and figure out how those stripes are going to fall along the shirt. And of course they'll follow that length grain. So I have to imagine what that length grain is doing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sort of pencil in the stripes first, which of course you can do, especially if you are kind of a little bit more new and you wanna make sure that what you're doing is going to look nice and you can make final adjustments afterwards instead of going straight to ink or marker or whatever you are. So I'm following straight down on that length grain, okay? So pretty simple so far. And most stripes are evenly placed, so I wanna keep that. Now, if your stripes are you know, shorter, closer together or farther apart, and they kind of vary, um, you'll just put your stripes in accordingly. But most stripes have an even distance from each other. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and make sure that all my stripes are even. I don't want them too close together here or too far away there. Now, when I start to get over here, I'm getting over here and I have some wrinkles. So she's sort of kicking up her hip on this side and it's causing the shirt to bunch up a little bit on the side over here. Now, whenever we have that, we have to sort of start to show it in the stripe. And how we're going to do that is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of buckle the stripe. So we have to imagine what's happening. Right here, the fabric is sort of buckling, it's folding. So the grain is kind of going a little bit buckled and folded. So I'm gonna kind of break it up, maybe kind of curve it a little bit. And the more it goes, The more it's folded, the more it will break. And we'll see that quite a bit when we get over here, but let's wait. Okay, now on the sleeves, it's a separate piece of fabric. So whenever we have separate pieces of fabric, it always might make the stripes do a different thing because the grain might be doing a different thing. Now in our sleeves, the grain runs along the top of the uh, seam right here. So it's gonna, oops kind of go right down the arm like that. So I'm gonna start right up here. We're gonna follow, oh, there's a little buckle right here. And have it go down, okay? So let's finish this up and then ink it. Go a little quicker. Now let's ink these stripes. Now of course, stripes can be fat or thin. 
But when we map it out like this, we only really need to do a little bit of a, a line. And, I, and then I can go back and make the line about as thick as I want it to. Now, I'm not pushing it out too much. So a lot of times what will happen around the bust is it'll put, push out. Um, but this is kind of a loose fitting shirt. So there's not going to be that kind of roundedness to the stripe around, along the bust. We'll see that a little bit more over here. Maybe a little bit over here. You might want to a little tiny buckle. Just a little bit poking out behind there. A little buckle. And you break it up right here. And come down. Not a much. It's not that big of a bunch. Or big of a wrinkle. Okay. Let's do the arms. A little buckle and again just buckling and breaking it up a little bit within those areas is going to make those wrinkles look a little bit more full a little bit more real see that just kind of peeking out right there a little buckle Little buckle. Okay, so there we are. And again, we can make them fatter or thicker, um, even thinner if you want, so on and so forth. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at what the cross grain is doing. Now this is all pretty simple, but again, we'll get more complicated as we go. And of course the cross grain is gonna go across and it's typically pretty lined up with our bus line. So let's go ahead, but what I'm gonna do is, our body is round, so I don't wanna go completely straight across. I wanna curve it a little bit. And this is depends on kind of um, where your line of sight is or where you wanna put your line of sight to the drawing. So let me just explain line of sight a little bit here. So um, when you're looking out, we have what's called the horizon line, and that's where around a sort of cylinder. Let's imagine our body sort of like a cylinder. It's a good sort of reduction simplification. Um, if we look at a cylinder, and I'll draw the cylinder here, and our line of sight is right here at the middle, the lines are going to be completely straight. So wherever you look at the body where you decide your line of sight is going to be, I typically put my line of sight fairly high um, uh, typically around here, around the sort of the face, it's a little bit more natural. So if we look at a person, um, we usually, depending on whether they're taller than us or shorter than us, you know, um, if we're taller than them, our light of sight might be all the way up here. If we're a little bit shorter, it might be here, um, so on and so forth. So if we take a look, uh, sometimes I put it a little bit lower too, it depends on how you want to do it. So if you're managing them sort of up on a runway, um, but here's sort of the cylinder of their body. So the, the horizon again is where our eyes will lay on the body. So if I'm looking just directly straight, where are they going to hit? So let's say maybe like around here, then it is going to be straight. Everything above that line of sight along that cylinder is going to start to curve up. And the farther you get away from that line, it's going to curve more and more. Okay. Similar to the bottom, it's going to start to curve down and it'll curve more and more as you get away. Okay, so let's think about that. Maybe we can start where we want the line of sight. Maybe the line of sight's gonna be up here. So I can start with a very straight across line up here. Trying to keep these intersections 90 degrees. And then I'm going to kind of start to curve, not too much, but just sort of curve up a little bit. Then if we think we have anything sort of poking out, if we need it. So I want to keep these boxes, you know, the lines that intersect, I want to keep them at a nice 90 degree angle. Because of course, when we cross the, uh, the intersection between the cross grain and the length grain is always going to be 90 degrees. 
Okay, now we're here. So I'm going to start to kind of go down, but the bust is a little bit full, so I might angle it up a little bit just to sort of get that fullness. But again, since they're down, we're going to start to blend into this more kind of curve here. And keeping 90 degrees as best I can. Starting to sort of curve it a little bit downward. Again, it's going to be a little bit wrinkly here. So the same thing's going to happen. I'm going to kind of, you know, wrinkle it, break it up a little bit. And one more. And here I want to keep to the hem pretty closely, that same curve. Okay? Let's go ahead and do our arms. Now the arms, of course, are even more of a cylinder than we are uh, than our torso. So I want to make those little curves. You know, here we just kind of did a little bit of a curve. Here I want to do it a little bit more. But right where we have the eye line, it is going to be fairly straight. I'm going to maybe curve it up just a little bit there as we see it go around the figure. Again, I'm going to break it up a little bit in the wrinkle. And there we are. Let's go ahead and finish this arm. So there's our plaid. We have both our vertical and our horizontal stripes bending around the figure as they should following the grain and what it's doing. Uh, and this is kind of what I love about stripe exercises is you really have to understand what the fabric is doing and drawing stripes and plaids just overall really, really helps your technique in rendering fabric because you have to have that sort of better understanding of what it's doing. Okay. Now let's switch down to the pants, maybe for a little bit of, you know, variety sake. Let's maybe change the color. It'll help come out a little bit better. Maybe I'll do a, uh, a brighter color and a thicker line. So I got a marker here it was whatever was close by. And again, I want to do the same thing as before. I want to sort of figure out that line. So on the pants, our grain line is going straight up and down the legs. So that, you know, center of the pants, you know, a lot of times where you see that, maybe if you have a, a pleated pant or, or a creased plant, pant, you're gonna see it come right here, maybe a little bit of break up right here, and then we'll bring it down. And very, very straight all the way down, okay? So they're following the leg. Um, and again, it's always gonna follow the body and what the fabric are doing. So people kind of just, kind of go like this it's not it's not exactly correct it's not going to following the body okay now I'm going to go on and uh do my other ones you know I'm sort of skipping the planning out stage but I don't want to make this video too long and boring again well if we don't see any more of that we're not going to see any more of that that's fine here I might want to wiggle it a little bit, wiggle it a little bit, again just to make those wrinkles look real. Now I'm going to sort of on this leg, so again, 
there's a seam here, remember? So you should know that now um, from the flab videos, all of our pants are always gonna have a seam in the middle, which means this is a separate piece of fabric than this one. So when we start our stripes here, they might go in a different direction, but that's okay, because it's a different piece of fabric. And again, this leg is doing something different. Well, break it up. And right on the edge there. Yeah, I'll come back there. I'm good. So um, a lot of time, uh, or the pants are very similar to the seat sleeves, as you can tell. We have the grain going down there. So let's go ahead and do the cross grain. And again, the cross grain is going to be very similar to the uh, sleeves here where we're going to curve it. Now it's all below our eye line, so it's all going to curve downward. Let's break it up a little bit in that wrinkle. And there we are. Okay, let's do the other leg. Break it up a little bit there in that wrinkle. And I'm angling these curves a little bit more because this is angled out. So this, these grain lines, again, are going this way. I'm sort of tilting the curve a little bit this way to keep them perpendicular when they intersect. Break it up. The hem, we always want to follow the hem. Sometimes it's good to start at the hem. Here we're going to start at the hem. So there we are, we have our stripes and our plaids. Um, so that's sort of the very simple version, but what happens when our fabric starts to do um, more complicated things? So I have a dress over here, and again, it is doing some very complicated things. Uh, we have it, you know, we have drapes, we have uh, shirring or ruching over here, we have little tucks in the bust, so how is that going to affect our stripes, okay? So um, let's start here, and I kind of wanted to do different. Here we started top down here, I'm gonna start bottom up. So I was mentioning how important these hems are down here that whenever we get to the bottom, our horizontal stripes always want to match what the hem is doing. So we wanna match exactly what the hem is doing. So let's focus in down here for a minute. So I have all these drapes, and as you can see, for every drape, it's sort of creating a break in the hemline. And this is showing how the fabric is pushing forward and some of it's going back to create the drapes. It's creating that sort of three-dimensional effect. Now our stripes are gonna do the exact same thing. So let's, do I have another fun color maybe I can use? Maybe do blue. So I'm going to start with the cross grain, the horizontal stripes here. Oh, I can get my marker open. And what I want to do is I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to follow very closely what the hem is doing. Okay, so this is curving down like that. Okay, so now what happens is we jump down. So this flare is coming out and the actual line is jumping down. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna follow the curve. I'm gonna be a little bit thicker. Like so. Now what happens? It's jumping back up. Turn on all this a little bit closer jumping back up, okay? And what's gonna happen is between these folds of the skirt, the stripe is gonna break up, just like the hem broke up. 
And this is going to make it look full and it's going to look make it look three dimensional. Because if you do it, just continue to cross the same sort of deal. It is, it's going to need to be a little bit thicker. I want to keep it the same thickness all the way across. Um, it's going to look too flat if you just did it all the way across and not breaking it up like so. Now jump back down. So I'm going to do the same thing. Jump back down. Again, I'm rounding these shapes up here. It's going to mimic this as well. Now we have this flare kind of go out like this. So let's do it. And it jumped up, so it should be a little bit higher than this one. So there we go. Let's continue on. Okay, so this one jumps up again, at least at the beginning here. And jumps up again. You see this bottom part here that would be sort of like the space in between the stripes is staying the same. And let's go ahead. And one more. Now you might be saying, hey, if this was really cross grain, it wouldn't do that on a flared skirt. Hopefully you're saying that. Yes, I know, but sometimes we have a nice border and you wanna know what it's like anyhow. Um, okay, so there's our first stripe. Let me give it a little bit of a, a capping so it looks a bit cleaner, so you can really see what's going on. Look, it's a little bleedy, so I want to make it a little bit sort of just cleaner and clearer. There we go. Really see how that stripe is now jumping. My black makes it look a little bit more clean. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of continue until we get up here. So as you can see, the flares kind of fade out up here. So what I want to do is let me go continue in black. It's a little easier, bleeds less um, for the demo. Um, and so let's go ahead and let's I'm gonna do another one. Actually, I'll, no, I'll continue in blue, um, but I'm gonna have space them a little bit bigger. So let's start another one up here. Again, it's not gonna be quite as curved as that bottom one, still a little bit curved. Okay. Now what happens, it goes down, so I still want that to happen. Again, and this is the space, I want to replicate this space here, here. I'm going to do it from flare to flare, flare, flare line to flare line. There we go. And again, this bumps up a little bit, so I'm going to bump up the next one a little bit. And we're still pretty in the, the thick part of the flares, but we're going to start to bump it up and drop it a little bit less as we move up. Okay. 
Okay? So what happens? Goes up again. Quite as much, but... Okay, again, bump up a little bit. All right, what happens? Another little tiny bump up. Here we'll bump it up again, quite a bit more. This one's a little bit deeper. And there we go, there's our next line. Okay, I'm gonna clean it up with a black so you can really see it, see what it's doing. Okay, so there we are. And let me just sort of break it up a little bit. Ooh. So I typically do the black lines after the coloring, but just to show you this for this demonstration. Okay, let's do our next one. And again, these breaks, so see how they're a little bit less, a little bit less severe on this next one? Well, we're gonna get even less severe here until we eventually smooth it all out by the time we get up to the hips. So here, okay, we have this sort of little wiggle coming. So it's going to be a little bit, I'm going to start to sort of change even the shape of the stripe as the fold. So it's going to be kind of round and then kind of go up a little bit. Okay, so this jumps down. I'm going to jump it down, but not quite as much. Here again, goes up, gonna do it a little bit less. Goes down a little bit less than I have been doing it. Here it goes up and around. And here we might even start to almost not break it at all. Let's imagine this fold is not as deep. Just a little bit of a break here. See that kind of come around here. And then instead of breaking it here for these guys, we can imagine I'm just gonna sort of curve it a little bit differently. I'm not even gonna break it. Make it a little wiggly, making it look like it's going in and out of those seams. And here we go up here. I'm still going to break it a little bit. This one, remember, is a little bit more. All right, now let me clean that up so you can see it real nice.
And there we are. We can just accent those lines a little bit more so we can see them. It's kind of hard to get it over. There we go. Now we're going to, okay, we have maybe one or two more. But they're really going to be, I'm not going to really break it at all. I might just sort of wiggle it a little bit. Because again, here's where the folds are not as deep. They're kind of fading out. Not really anything there, so I'm just going to go straight across until this line. Maybe a little bit of a break. So last little break, and then kind of just wiggle it within the folds here, and then go all the way across here. And here's a little bit of a break. Remember, this is one of our bigger folds here on the side. So I'm just going to break it up. This is just this is our last little break. But just a wee bit. Okay. Then I'm going to do the last one. The last one, there's no wrinkles up here. So it's just going to go smoothly across. Let's assume they do like this. Okay. Let's ink that so it's nice and clear. So there we go. And as you, oh. okay, so as you can see, we have a very broken stripe when the drapes are very, very full. And it makes it look fairly three-dimensional. And of course, we can always add to this um, uh, with shading. Maybe I'll do a quick shade at the very end, um, just so we can review that a little bit. As we go up and the drapes themselves uh, start to fade in and hug the body a little bit closer, lose their depth, um, it starts to flatten it out. And we flatten it out fairly gradually until it's completely smooth where the drapes are ending. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at how our length grain is going to be affected by this. Um, so what's going to happen is they're going to underneath these folds as well, depending on where they run into. A little bit less, um, and if they don't run into any at all, um, we might not get any. So I know I'd like to sort of start in the middle and work your way out. So we want to sort of work our way out. And I'm going to get these a little bit thinner. And again, I like to start in that middle. So I'm going to start that sort of center front line. And it doesn't really look like it might run into too many folds here. We're kind of on the top of one. So I'm just going to let that be. I'm bleeding into the top here, but let's make it a little bit thicker so it's not a little bit more. Okay, so that one didn't run into any real folds, so we're good. We just sort of draw the line down, okay? Easy peasy. Now, let's do another one. And again, I wanna keep it especially up here where there's no folds, very much like this, very even. And then I want, see how this sort of starts to come out like this? I'm going to start to sort of kind of throw it out. Not too much, because again, this is length grain. So we might see a little bit kind of come here. So I'm going to cut this straight down. But here, see the fold is right here. So it's going to hide underneath that. So whenever we have a, a fold coming kind of deep into it, it 
it's going to hide underneath those folds. So that's part of the garment that's sort of going in. We can't see it. These are going to kind of come closer together. There we are. I'm going to pat it out a little bit over here. It's quite thick enough over here. There we are. Okay, let's continue on. Now I'm going to start from here and kind of come work down again, always working perpendicularly to our cross grain. Now I have a flare here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it. And I'm going to come here and this kind of pumps, pushes this out here a little bit. So what is going to happen is it kind of goes in and around. So it's going to be a little bit broken here. Come out a little farther down the line here. And here's another fold. So we might see that break it up as well. And we might see it come and disappear into here. So this has gotten through a lot of different folds and so it's broken up quite a bit. So let's see what that's gonna look like a little bit cleaner. Okay, it's going to start to sort of break up in those folds. And we can make it look a little touch this line, make it a little bit darker so we can see it. Now here again, see this is we want to make sure that we're looking for spots that might be too big. It's because down here, when we get into the sort of hem, we're going to look for that. That was too big here again. I want to start another one kind of coming down here. And I'm almost not even trying to do one. I'm just sort of looking at where it needs it. There's that. That one from there. Okay. Let's continue on over here. We'll do another one. Again, it's very flat here, so that's good. There's a little bit of a bubble right here, so it might start to distort the shape right in here, where I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to continue on sort of like this, but which is also leaving this um, fairly undone. So I might want to add in here. We'll have one sort of peeking out there. Maybe come here. Let's clean it up. Let's say that this one is hiding in here. Boop, boop, boop. And continue on. And let's put, put a little one on the side here. And again, I'm going to end it right at that fold because it would be in the fold. Okay. So there we have our plaid skirt. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> our length ring kind of going here. And um, again, the broken up stripes, broken up more in the horizontal than we have in the vertical, but Wherever there's a big fold, we want to break that up in the fold as well. Okay, now let's take a look at 
um, what we're going to do for this little ruching part. And I want to start with um, the vertical. Now this whole thing, so ruching and shirring, it's really, it's fabric that is just super bunched. So instead of, you know, having a sort of flat, smooth piece like this, it's all bunched up like this. So we have nothing but little folds and um, bends and wrinkles to work within. So our line is going to be very wrinkly um, because of that. So I'm going to start in the middle. Let's do pink here. And again, I'm going to just keep it super wiggly. And again, if I'm going to, I'm going to break it up if I think that uh, is a little bit too deep. Or the fold is going to be super deep. So I'm just going to keep it again super wrinkly. And I'm trying to go by my lines, but you know, they're so small. Just kind of break it up. Break it up. I'm breaking it up again, it's going to make it look wrinkly. Give it like that texture and be accurate to what it would actually do. Okay, so there's my horizontal, I'm sorry, my vertical, my length grain stripes. Now what do I do? How's it gonna affect my uh, horizontal stripes? Um, so it's actually, it's very interesting. So it's very similar to the skirt where the drapes are like this and going like this. Uh, they're vertical kind of depth. The depth is vertical. The change in fabric is kind of vertical. So it affects the horizontal stripes more. They're more wiggly. Um, here, the folds go across. They go horizontally. So it is affecting the vertical stripes more. So um, we're going to apply the cross grain a lot like we did here. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit more. I should do this with the, not with the brush tip. It'll be easier to see. Oh, that had any ink in it. Okay, so brush tip it is. But I'm basically just going to break it off every so often. as if it were going into a fold and getting lost. So let's see, I'm not going straight across, I'm kind of breaking it up, going across. Now I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna probably ink that a little bit better so you can see it a little bit clearer on both directions. So let's see. Good. Again, you don't have to ink it black, I just wanted to, to see you be to be able to see that one's out of ink, of course. The one that I need. How about this? Okay, good enough, I guess. I want you to see what it's doing. I'm probably not going to ink all of them, but. And actually, um, just a note again, I'm doing the sort of black outline so you see what it's doing a little bit easier. But if your stripe is pink without a black eye outline, I would not be doing this. Because again, then it would be not very accurate of your fabric. Of course, we want to match our fabric as close as possible. But you can see just by breaking it up and bringing it down, it really gives a depth to those um, stripes and to those wrinkles. So again, these guys, I'll just keep you across a little bit and then kind of fade away. Make sure there's no part that's like too sparse. It's a little sparse here. So we're just kind of breaking it up. It's not going to be completely across. They won't kind of, they'll kind of break up from here and there. Maybe go in different directions. Okay, so that's how we do stripes along ruching. Now, let's just take a look. This should be easy. This is kind of our last sort of look. It's flat with maybe a little bit of tucks, and it's going to be very much like we handled it right here with um, the wrinkles in the shirt and the pants. 
Like I'll just switch back to black. Now, a lot of times with V-necks, um, especially in V-necks with dresses like this, what we'll do is instead of having the grain come along the center front like this, we'll angle it and have the uh, length grain align with our V-neck. Um, and it's commonly done with V-necks like this, and it's it even more commonly done with V-necks like this when they have a striped fabric. Um, because it's much more attractive to have those stripes follow that neckline. I'm going to sort of have it follow that neckline like that. And we'll have another one. And then I'm going to just sort of just break it up a little bit down here. Break it up. Break it up. Reinforce those so we can see them. And let's do the same over here. Ooh, just a little breaking up. And let's do these a little darker so they show up. Okay, so there we are. We have, oh, let me do the, the cross. And we'll just put it in perpendicular. Be flat here until we get to these guys. And we're gonna sort of break it up a little bit. Where they're shirring. so on and so forth. Okay, now, um, so that should give you a good idea of how to do our um, stripes. And like I said, I'm just gonna do a quick shading to show you how to do it, um, just as sort of a little bit of a brush up. So let's remember how we do our shading. Remember, we pick a light direction so this will be from the top down. I like it this way because I'm right-handed, so I can work on this side. So our light is coming from the left down on the figure. The opposite side of the figure will be in shadow. So everything on her left, right side, well, her left side, mine. Just throw that in there quick. And wherever the body sort of splits, so the arm gets it and the torso. Okay, so that's the right side. Now it's now shadowed, the side away from the light. Um, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna take a look for uh, things that jut out. So underneath the neck, and of course the neck also has this side. The nose. Little eyes, maybe cheekbone. Top lip, bottom there. Um, the hair that goes in back, so this hair is coming out front, but it's also coming back. So I'm gonna do a little bit of shading just to drop the hair behind the figure. like that and there we go. Little plus there and okay our folds those little tucks I'm gonna go ahead and do it the bust kind of comes out so I'm gonna underdo so this is very close to the bust so I'm just gonna shade the underneath and to give these guys depth I'm going to add a little bit of shadow in here because again it's sort of wrinkled and I'm going to add it also inside the pleats, not the pleats, I'm sorry, the drapes here of the skirt. And the parts that round out, I'm going to keep light. And the parts that sink in, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow. 
okay? It just gives it a little bit more of that depth. See this part sinks in. So there we go. This arm, these arms are sinking behind the body. So there we go. Got to make it sink behind. The skirt hem is poking out over the legs quite a bit. So to give it a little bit more pop, give it a little bit more depth, let's make sure that it's casting a shadow. Ooh, and let's remember to do the shadow for this leg. Okay. And then there's just our quick shadow, our shading for that piece. Again, super simple, super easy. Um, we don't have to do every little thing, work with one light direction, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do this one. Um, again, same thing. I want shadow here. Now this is a little bit dark for this. This is a number two gray. And rest of the body on this side. I'm already kind of going and doing a little bit of the wrinkles. And of course, pants jump over. This goes behind. I'm not going to get it on this side anyway. A little bit of wrinkle, a little bit of wrinkle, a little bit of wrinkle. Right here is behind. A little bit on the face, a little bit on the hair, and a little bit right there. Oh, and last but not least, we have on the side of here. And if you want to, this again, this isn't too much, uh, too fitted. So the shadow that the bust is going to cast isn't going to be too big. But if you want to show a little bit of it, show just a little bit of it. Okay. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Hope it uh, helped you learn how to do stripes a little bit easier. And I'll see you in the next video.